I looked through every single mod that I could find for Subnautica and found the weirdest, most cursed mods that honestly make me question my sanity. From a mod that allows you to play Subnautica in third person to a mod that changes every single creature into a meme, we are basically stretching Subnautica to its breaking point in this video. Keep in mind, there may be other cursed mods that I am currently not aware of. These are just my favorites out of the ones that I could find. So without any further ado, let's get into the craziness. The first mod we're going to be looking at is a mod that allows you to play Subnautica in third person, and this is just as cursed as you might think. The game is just simply not meant to be played in this way, and I completely broke the game several times while testing this out. Riding in the Seamoth in the prawn suit is hilarious, while whenever you go into the Cyclops, you switch back to first person for some reason. This mod is so much fun to play around with and see all the animations from a completely different view. I would definitely recommend trying this out, and I'm even considering trying to beat the game in third person. Next up, we have a mod that gives both the Seamoth and the Cyclops the ability to not only traverse the depths of the sea, but to also fly the expanse of the sky. This mod actually works surprisingly well, both the Seamoth and the Cyclops can fly around pretty much anywhere. You can also dock both the Seamoth and the Prawn Suit in the Cyclops, and whenever you exit the Cyclops, it will stay where you left it, essentially giving yourself a stationary airbase. The Seamoth, however, will fall back down to the ocean after you exit it. There's also another module that allows you to call your Seamoth from anywhere in the crater, and it will be teleported to you in a matter of seconds, which is also pretty cool. Our next mod allows us to add new craftable items to Subnautica. So naturally, my first idea was to give myself the ability to not only put cuttlefish eggs in the bioreactor for that 210 power, but to also, once the cuttlefish are fully grown, give myself the ability to cook them for 80 food and 30 water. I also decided to add in the ability to cook a ton of other creatures, including the bone shark, ampule, crab snake, crab squid, crash fish, gasopod, jelly ray, lava lizard, mesmer, rabbit ray, sand shark, and stalker. I could basically give myself the ability to cook everything else, but I only created these because all the other cooked fauna would really look the same as what these look like. The possibilities for this mod are endless, as already demonstrated by a few of the things that people have created. A craftable snack, and a drink known as Dr. Peeper. Seeing all the endless potential for cursed additions to the game, it's no surprise this mod made the list. This mod adds a bunch of Minecraft fish to Zymnotica. Yeah, that's about it. Next, let's take a look at the significant amount of mods which add new weapons to Subnautica. These mods, by nature, are cursed due to the fact that the Subnautica developers specifically decided to not add real weapons like guns to Subnautica, as a result of gun violence in the United States. First up, we have a mod that adds the alien rifle which can be found in the quarantine enforcement platform to the game. Although it takes up a ton of power, the alien rifle deals a tremendous amount of damage, and basically allows you to kill every leviathan with ease. The next mod adds the ancient sword which can be found in the primary containment facility to the game. Upon being crafted, the ancient sword acts very similarly to the knife, only of course it deals a much greater amount of damage. Next up, we have a mod which, no joke, adds a laser cannon to the Cyclops. Once again, this does use up a ton of power, but it's just as overpowered as it is cursed. It can kill a Reefback Leviathan which has 10,000 health in 4 hits. That's about 2,500 damage per shot. The next curse mod, which is my personal favorite, is known as the Tech Pistol. This mod adds a pistol to the game, which has four different modes, each of which allow the pistol to do a different thing. The first mode is the laser mode. When the gun is put into this mode, it tells the player the amount of health something has, and then deals a small amount of damage per shot. The second mode is the cannon mode, where you can charge up the cannon, which will then deal a large amount of splash damage to everything nearby. The more you charge up, the more power it will cost, but also the more damage it will do. The third and fourth modes are probably the best out of all of them, however. That's because these modes allow the player to make every single interactable object in the game larger or smaller, depending on which mode they're in, including flora, fauna, outcrops, resources, the life pod, and even certain parts of the ground, which completely breaks the game, by the way. No question about it, this pistol is definitely one of the most cursed Subnautica mods out there. Our next mod is a mod that adds four new torpedoes to Subnautica. A standard explosive torpedo, which basically just creates a large explosion like a torpedo in real life would. A standard homing torpedo, which does the same thing as the first torpedo, except now it homes in on your target. A nuclear torpedo, which is exactly what you think it is. Basically, a small nuclear bomb that can be fired out of your Seamoth or Prawn suit that kills a reef back in six hits. And then finally, the homing nuclear torpedo, which is the same thing as the nuclear torpedo, except once again, it homes in on your target. Testing out this mod was probably one of the most fun things I've done in a while. 
And now, our last cursed weapon mod for Subnautica is the Seamoth Laser Cannon. This cannon, like the others very similar to it, is extremely overpowered and does a lot of damage while taking up a lot of power. These mods, while being extremely cursed, are a whole lot of fun and I would definitely recommend you try them out. Next up on the list is a mod that allows you to customize the water level in your Subnautica world. You can both raise the water in your world, essentially putting the entire world in the void, or you can lower the water level in your world, essentially draining the entire world. As you might imagine, this can lead to some pretty cursed moments and challenges, which is why the mod definitely deserves a spot on the list. Up next, we have a mod that allows you to rotate yourself both clockwise and counterclockwise while you're swimming around or inside of a SEMA. This is seriously so much fun to mess around with, but it also makes you very dizzy at the same time. I've honestly wanted to have something like this in the game for a while now, and it definitely adds a whole new feel to the game. This next mod adds 7 new pieces of equipment to Subnautica, but only 5 of them are really cursed. First up, we have an oxygen tank which basically acts as a jetpack. You can use it to fly around, although it does run out of fuel pretty quickly or slow your fall from a high area. Second, we have grappling gloves which you can use to grapple yourself up to higher places. This comes with a set of fins which completely eliminates all fall damage as well in order to prevent you from dying all the time. Third, we have a suit which completely gets rid of all gravity on planet 4546b. This allows you to basically fly anywhere you want around the crater and is a whole lot of fun to use. Fourth, we have a computer chip that allows you to walk around underwater as if you were on land. While you can pull this off with some various glitches, this is still pretty fun to try out if you haven't done so already, and leads to some pretty awesome challenges. Finally, we have a computer chip which greatly lowers the gravity on planet 4546b, basically allowing you to jump around the planet as if you were on the moon. This is actually super interesting to me because alien planets often have lower gravity than Earth's gravity, so this could actually actually be realistic. This mod literally adds craftable dirt blocks to Subnautica. I have no idea why somebody made this. The next mod we're going to be looking at is one that I'm sure many of you have heard of. The Socks for One creature mod that completely changes the models for all the creatures in the game. Yes, I mean all of them. Every single creature has a different model, different animations, different sounds, it's seriously one of the funniest yet most cursed mods I have ever seen. The mod turns the Reaper Leviathan into Shrek, the Reefback Leviathan into Big Chungus, the Sea Trader Leviathan into My Little Pony, the Ghost Leviathan into Rick Sanchez, the Sea Emperor into Thanos, and very fittingly, the Sea Dragon Leviathan into Bowser. There are so many other hilarious memes that creatures have been turned into with his mod, so it definitely deserves a spot on the list of the most cursed Subnautica mods. The next mod we're going to be looking at allows us to not only put your cuttlefish eggs in a bioreactor or cook a fully grown cuttlefish, but to also convert cuttlefish eggs into batteries and power cells. Both a cuttlefish battery and power cell hold slightly more power than normal batteries and power cells, so I would say this exchange is definitely worth it. Next up, we have a mod that allows you to customize the color of your life pod. Needless to say, this can result in your life pod looking really weird and completely out of place. Next, we're going to be looking at a mod that completely randomizes all creature sizes, meaning some creatures will be unusually small while others will be abnormally massive. This honestly makes playing the game so much fun. It's seriously hilarious when you're swimming around and then suddenly an absolutely titanic reefback leviathan loads in right in front of you. Also, I would like to mention spawning in a ton of reaper leviathans and at the same time, while this mod is installed, isn't going to end well. I'd also like to quickly mention that there's also a mod that allows you to configure certain creature sizes, which is also pretty cool. Our next mod allows the player to increase the spawn frequency of every resource in the game to a lot higher than it normally is. This leads to some pretty cursed areas that are just completely covered with resources. For example, the safe shallows is now completely covered in metal salvage, the grassy plateaus is now completely covered in outcrops, the lost river now has a ton of super valuable resources everywhere, the lava castle now houses truckloads of kyanite, and so much more. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps me a ton. Huge thanks to my patrons over at Patreon, Baby Yoda, Baked Frames, Moon Lord, Cybot Sean, Skeptic, and Tangy. If you want to be awesome, become a patron and support today, and I will see you guys in the next video.